All right, everyone. So last night it rained, I, or even yesterday it rained, I think two inches total. I mean, it was a crazy amount of rain, um, at least an inch. And without a doubt, it was probably the most intense rain I think I've ever experienced here in this uh, location. Uh, it just rained super hard. It came down so quick that um, you can see a lot of branches actually have been kind of bent over, including the, uh, the butterfly bush, which actually has recovered, believe it or not, from it being bent down even further. Um, I was a bit worried that some branches would break, believe it or not. I had obviously a feeling that a lot of the figs were going to split and just other things were going to happen to various things in the yard like uh, maybe these trellises would come down uh, we did have a trellis on the other side of the yard that did come down so yeah it's not really been pleasant and this also gives us though a chance to update because i just got these on before the rain came in these trash bags we talked about this in i think two videos now um, and you can see there's definitely a lot of water just sitting on top of these these pots. Um, I think without a doubt in some of these, um, there's no way around it. I think some of this water got in anyway um, because of how much rain we ended up getting. I mean, you can see how much this is just sitting here, but it's gonna overflow in different locations and it's gonna just cause an issue. So uh, without a doubt, no matter what, I think there's rain gonna come in. But what this means for me is that I need to come in here and I need to straighten this out and get all this water out of here because this water just sitting here is not good for breeding mosquitoes and I'm not gonna be able to do this with one hand. But this will eventually breed mosquitoes, potentially SWD as PA Figs Nick had commented on the uh, last video we did. There was a lot of comments by the way from you guys which I appreciate and I wanna go over a couple of the things that uh, I believe just not to be true. First off, there was a number of you guys who were like, putting the black plastic over top of the soil is a bad idea because it just creates too much heat and the roots are gonna cook. And for me here in my climate, that's absolutely not an issue. <laughs> in fact, that is so recommended that uh, I don't know what else to say. I mean, you really want um, these temperatures of these roots to be high. We've talked about that all season long. For people to actually be commenting that, I guess they just haven't watched the videos in the beginning portion of the season because that's all we talked about. I mean, that's literally all we talked about for like a month <laughs> is trying to raise those root temperatures, get the mulch away. Uh, putting on rocks, getting these uh, black pots on the patio, um, you know, getting them in an area with more thermal mass, you know, really just increasing the, the root zone temperatures. And even if it's 90 degrees out here, even 100 degrees out here, these trees can handle it. In fact, figs can handle like 130 degrees. It's not obviously optimal <laughs> and they can't do that for very long, but they're one of the few species that really just does well with heat. At the root zone, at about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, the tree will stop growing. And that's what we want anyway. I would rather prefer my trees at this point of the season, they have fruit on them. We just talked about lignifying branches. I would rather have them stop growing at this point in the season and actually stop growing for the rest of the season. So inevitably, almost no matter where you live, this is probably a good, well, that's not true, but in most climates, wherever you guys live in the United States, this is gonna work out for you in terms of the heat. We want this heat. You don't want this heat in a place like Arizona or a place like California or maybe West Texas, you know, Nevada, like somewhere in the desert. So, you know, it's obviously whatever you do in every video that I've ever created is always location and climate dependent, depending on your microclimate, depending on your techniques, and I think little people got a few, little bit up in arms, not really up in arms, but concerned for me um, that this wouldn't work. I, I don't know. So let, I'm gonna try to explain a couple of the things right now. And that's what we're kind of doing in this video. 
Um, another misconception that people were talking about is that mold is gonna form underneath these, these bags. On top of the soil, in the pot, we're gonna have mold because there's less airflow, there's too much water. That's a recipe for mold, but it is a recipe for mold, but what exactly is molding here? This is organic material that would mold, but organic material doesn't mold if in the right conditions, it will then compost down, right? Now, assuming there's an anaerobic, you know, there's not enough, there's not enough uh, oxygen, there's too much water, things become anaerobic, yeah, you could get some pretty awful things happening in these pots, but the goal of this is to keep them dry anyway. We're going we're gonna to keep the water out so that underneath the, the bag, it's dry, or somewhere between dry and moist. If it's wet, then this isn't doing its job anyway, and I should get rid of it. You know what I mean? So we're not really trying to create the conditions for mold, which I've never really seen mold on soil. That doesn't really exist. Maybe mold on spoiled fruit, you know, or maybe, um, you know, something that has a, like a sugar content to it. But leaves will compost and so will soil, right? Also, the conditions in here, figs are so, um, they're so incredible that they actually have anti, almost anti-water properties in terms of they just don't rot along the bark nearly as easily, I find, as other things. Um, that's why we can bury them all the way down in the bottom of the pot, cover that with soil, and they form roots in that in those locations. So I don't think anyone really brought that up, but that could be a concern that some people are mentioning is that the, the water around the trunks of the tree or the, the moisture around the trunks of the tree is just too high, as you can see right here. And this would then create some rot. Now that, that could certainly happen. That's probably my biggest worry out of the whole water thing, um, you know, out of the whole mold thing, which again, I don't really think is going to happen. So um, we'll keep an eye on it. And obviously this is not a perfect situation. Another thing that um, people had mentioned is just put up a portable greenhouse or a portable covering over, over top of these trees. I think that's a great idea. And I fa in fact, I think that's probably the best idea that there is, is that when it rains, just set the whole thing up. And then when it's done raining, take it down. And that's just, you know, it's a lot of work, uh, especially for one person trying to set that up. It's kind of like a portable tent for those of you guys who have seen those things. Plus, I would need two of them. You know, I need one for this section over here. And, and I guess I could neglect this area here, but um, I guess I could set up one giant one, perhaps, and just take that down somehow very easily. That would be, to me, worth it, I think, out of all the solutions that exist. Another solution a lot of you guys were talking about was getting yourself like a plastic disc or some kind of material and having a disc around the trunk of the tree and then the edges of the disc come past the, the pot and that way very little water gets in the, in the pot. And for me, that's also a great idea because it does the same exact thing as these bags. However, I have like a hundred or so pots. So I bought these trash bags, which were like $25 to cover all of them, um, to have one trash bag per pot. It was 25 bucks. Now, what material am I gonna be able to buy for that price for a hundred dollars or for a hundred pots? You know, people were recommending things that were like three to $5 a piece times that by a hundred and you just get something that's really expensive. Yeah, it's better than these trash bags. It's gonna last longer probably. It's easier to take off, it's easier to deal with. But cost unfortunately has a lot to play in here and I've already actually posed this question to the fig community on our figs to see if they could come up with anything and no one really came up with anything uh, that was affordable that did the same thing as these. Um, so I don't know if I'm really going to be able to get something better than this. I'm open to it, certainly, and I want to have something better than this, but I just don't think it's possible. Uh, so those were made like the major concerns, the major things that were brought up in that video that I kind of just wanted to address and show you guys kind of the results now. So um, like I said, the, some of the water definitely got in. 
Um, a lot of the water sitting here, potentially breeding mosquitoes or maybe even SWD. I know Nick was saying that he did this one year and they were breeding SWD for him. All this water and excess moisture. That's certainly the case. When there's a lot of water around, the SWD shows up. Um, fruit flies show up. They like wet conditions, especially decaying material. So if you have leaves that are decaying, uh, fruit that's decaying or fermenting, that's gonna bring a lot of those in. Fortunately, I haven't seen any SWD this year, and I know we don't normally see it till about now. Um, and most of the time, it's actually not until like September. So we still have a while to go, but um, I think I'm looking more confidently at this than um, I think others would potentially. Um, I've been able to actually handle the SWD pretty well with traps, getting myself a bucket. If you guys remember, we did that last year. We did a couple videos on it. Um, we put the bucket over there and just filled it with food, you know, filled it with leaves, filled it with decaying leaves, decaying fruit, fermenting fruit, anything that was being attacked, we just threw it in the bucket and then all the SWD swarmed that bucket because that's the source of all the fermenting things and then they dive in the bucket and they can't swim. So uh, the numbers certainly are dramatically decreased after that bucket is placed. Now. There is you know, a bit of a debate with that, and we're gonna get into more about that and see you know, what the results are again this year. But so far, I think that really works, and I'm not too concerned with SWD, as others probably are. Um, although I'm always vigilant in trying to prevent SWD from forming and coming and wreaking havoc on my yard. Um, another thing I think we should try, I think I should try is that we could get ourselves a steak and put a stake somewhere in the middle of the pot and then maybe attach like something around the stake to create a ring. And then that way tie the, the bag somewhere higher up on the stake. And then that way you're kind of forming uh, this bag to then tie around a trunk that's higher up. Even though it's not a tree, it's a stake. And it's higher up, that way the water is then shedding off and not getting into the, the middle of the pot. But then also um, you know, it's not creating a mosquito problem. So I think that's something I may look into. It's something I may do with these bags. Other trees, like, like this one right here is just so young that I can't really afford to cover this with the bag. In fact, I probably shouldn't even just cover this really much at all. Um, we really need this thing to grow and there's certain trees like that, that are just so small and young that I didn't want to cover them. And for the most part, if they're not fruiting this year, or I don't really care too much about the fruit quality, I didn't put the bags on. Um, so actually this one right here, I totally forgot about. However, there's three really young trees in here that would just create a lot of issues with actually having a bag wrapped around those small trunks. Um, but that's mostly the results I think so far. I can't really, comment too much on the splitting although this fig right here split quite a bit this is uh, mega celeste and actually it's been splitting just without any rain at all so it <laughs> it doesn't really tell me a whole lot um, this is a horrible variety for this climate I've uh, I've learned also the paradiso back here one of them did split um, so that's unfortunate Again, we covered the pots on these trees. Um, actually, it's this one right here that was covered, even though it's it's all the way over here. Um, our Colden on Blanc survived and didn't split. And these pots, by the way, are dry. So I made sure that I didn't really water these too well um, before this rain came in. I really wanted to keep these pots dry that way this whole thing could work you know that's the whole idea behind this is that same thing with this cold on blanc and negra this one didn't split they're definitely deteriorated right the skin definitely deteriorated on some of these um, we also have some figs that i picked and this is a fico nita which deteriorated on the exterior and split we had a uh 
you can see here that a lot of these have sort of deteriorated. This one, the Paradiso, actually did really well, but there's some mold at the eye. The skin on the LSU Scott's black got some cracking in it and deteriorated. Same thing with the Rasties Persian Unknown, deteriorated. The Col de Nom Blanc looks as good as new. Um, so I think some of these varieties did obviously better than others, but for the most part, I didn't have many figs split, and that was the key. That was the objective of all this, is to keep the soil dry by not watering it a whole lot, and then keeping out all that excess moisture from the rain. Combine that to those two things together, and we should have less splitting. Now, this is only one, one, one time, one event. So we'll see how this goes throughout the rest of the season. The real test is gonna be in September and October when things are colder, um, that's gonna be the real test. So we'll see, but I'm gonna make a video now for you guys enjoying these nice figs. Stay tuned for that, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. And uh, I do appreciate the ideas, by the way. I don't mean to shut anybody down, but um, yeah, I just think there's a lot less issues with this than you think. Um, really, realistically, for me, it's only about the mosquitoes. Um, and that's it. That's really my biggest issue with all of this. So, all right, guys, take care, and we will uh, we'll talk to you soon.